Okay, uh, so today is stage two. So at the top, you'll notice it says reducing or without aid. So every outcome in this list needs to be done with less than three armbands or even better, no armbands, okay? So I would expect if I'm passing somebody on stage two, that either they're in one armband at the beginning of the lesson and they can reduce to none towards the end or they're swimming with no armbands all lesson, okay? So that's what I'm wanting to see. So stage one, we're in three. Towards the end, we may be in two. Stage two, I wanna see one or none by the end, okay? Um, so number one, blow bubbles with facing water. So we've moved on from stage one where we're just blowing the bubbles. Now we need to be getting our face in. So you can start with saying, when you blow your bubbles, can you dip your nose in the water? Okay, so that's the beginnings. Then I would usually say to them, putting your nose in is the hard part because to put your eyes in the water, you just need to close them. And then we can talk about blinking. Um, so obviously lots of children struggle with their eyes getting wet because it's a new sensation for a lot of them. So we close our eyes, we blow bubbles with the full face in. When they come up, blink, 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 <laughs> blow it away. Um, jobs are good in, okay? So they need to be able to put their full face in and blow bubbles by the end of stage three. Travel on front and travel on back in a streamlined position without their woggle. So we're now looking for a lot less work with that woggle. Remember the woggle video? I said it's for safety, it's for isolating body parts, um, and it's for fun, okay? It's not for learning to swim, it doesn't help us. So we wanna see lots more time off the woggle. At this stage, that can be dangerous because a lot of them haven't got their, you know, their armbands on, they've got one or they've got none. So you might need to reduce how many are swimming, maybe swim two at a time rather than all six or three. Have the woggle ready so you can get them to swim without it towards you for half of the pool give them the woggle, let them swim back with it because they're safe and maybe they're tired on the way back, for example, okay? But we do need some time without that woggle. Notice on this one, it now says streamlined. I would still expect them to be streamlined in stage one because that's what we're aiming for, that's what we're teaching. If they're not, however, we can still pass them. Stage two, they cannot pass if they are not streamlined. So they need to have chin in the water, flat position on the surface and long and straight legs. I don't want to see any cycling, don't want to see any bendy, bendy knee kick, okay? It's got to be a long, straight flutter kick, okay? Um, retrieve an object in shallow water. So this is going down for the sinky, but they don't need to do a surface dive, okay? So this is just about, have they got the confidence to put their face in the water and reach down and pick it up from somewhere where they can pick it up anyway? And most children will start just by putting their hand in and picking it up without putting their face in. That's fine. They're exploring, they're experimenting, they're seeing how far down it is, okay? Then we're gonna encourage them to put their face in the water and reach down for it. It's not a challenge because they can pick it up. We're just putting the two skills together, okay? Can they put their face in and pick it up at the same time? Talk about blowing bubbles to be able to reach down, to sink. If you hold your breath, you stay up, you float. So we're gonna take a big breath, blow your bubbles out, reach down and collect it. So that it's in reaching distance, you can do this one on the steps or the ledge here, okay? Um, obviously you need to be somewhere they can stand up and they can reach down easily with their hand. So depending on what pool you're at, on the steps or on the ledge. Um, breaststroke leg kick on back with woggle. So this will probably be the first introduction to breaststroke legs, it's in stage two. So we don't need to do any frog legs in stage one, just, just flutter kick, okay? So now I would get them on the pool side, sat on the pool side, and I would demonstrate it myself. So with the woggle around my back, I would lay down and talk them through diamond, frog, triangle, snap. So I would talk them through it while I'm showing them. Then I would get them to copy me on the side. So they're sat on the side with their legs stretched out straight on the pool floor, uh, pool side floor, sorry. And they're copying you, diamond frog, triangle, snap. 
Once you're happy with that, get them all back in. Get them all with a woggle on their back and then they can all attempt it at the same time. So they're all gonna lay back and try their froggy legs. Um, depending on the width of your pool, if you've got space, you might need to do three and three. But you can just move around. They're all safe, they're all in a woggle. You can just move around, navigate through and maybe help manipulate with those legs. Don't forget to ask if it's okay for you to touch their feet. Um, but you can help them physically with the movements, okay? I would stay on their back throughout stage two, as we said in the breaststroke progress uh, practices, progressive practices video, they need to be able to do it correctly on their back before you flip over onto their front, okay? And um, then you can try with a speedboat and do it on their front for a bit in stage two. Uh, next one, jumping independently. So in stage one, they might have been jumping holding your hands, they might have been jumping holding one hand, they might have been jumping to you and you're catching them. In stage two, we really need to be moving towards them jumping in by themselves. They can jump to an aid, so if you want to put the woggle in front of them like a half moon and they can jump out and land on the woggle so they stay up and they can jump in and catch the woggle. They can jump in holding the woggle, so if they want to hold it on the pool side and jump with it, okay? And then obviously we've progressed to not having the woggle and jumping in by themselves. But as long as they're jumping independently of you, so whether that's with an aid, to an aid, or just into the water, perfect, um, they can pass stage two, okay? Star float on front with facing for five seconds. So they all know a star float. They should all be comfortable in a star float because we've done them loads in stage one. And as I said in my star float video, floating is so important to get them comfortable and competent with it. So they should all be comfortable with a star float. But now in stage two, we expect their face to be in the water and for them to be still for five seconds at the surface, okay? Remember to talk about blowing bubbles out and relaxing the body. On the back, we've already been doing it for five seconds in stage one. There's no extra element we've put in the face in, so I think in stage two we can go to 10 seconds. So star float on their back for 10 seconds. Um, swim five meters on the front, tuck and turn onto back and return five meters. So this is what I was talking about with the toys earlier um, when we did the stage one video. So they swim on the front, they collect their toy, they put it on their chest, they flip onto their back vertical, through the vertical axis, and they swim back on their back. In stage two, we're expecting them to do this without their armbands, okay? One armband, I don't mind so much, but we're, tr we're aiming for none, okay? So they've already got that skill from stage one. Now they should be doing it without their armbands on, okay? Um, I've just noticed on 12 here, I've not noticed this before, it says jumping independently. That's the same as that one. So just ignore that line, it's here, this is 12. Swim five meters, roll horizontally, continue on back five meters. So again, they've already mastered this skill with their armbands on in stage one. What we're expecting now is that they are competent swimmers on doggy paddle and on paddle on their back, that they can do it without their armbands. Um, again, with the ball, this might be tricky, maybe one or two children at a time. If they haven't got their armbands on, they flip over and it pops out, or vice versa, flip onto the front and it pops out. You might find a situation where you need to just give them a little hand to the side or pass them a woggle, okay? So just be mindful of that. Smaller balls, not so much. Floats, not so much. They tend to keep hold of these quite well. Um, but eventually, we're looking for, can they front paddle and roll this way onto their back and keep going without an aid, okay? So the balls you can practice with, the float you can practice with. By the end of stage two, I'm expecting that they can front paddle, roll onto their back and carry on kicking without any aid, okay, whatsoever. And then, <laughs> filters at it again today, there's some bubbles there. Um, so again, there's these little awards at the bottom. So on our online system, where the stages are, the drop down stages, go to the right, the drop down awards. For stage two, there is, I can put my face in the water. So once they're confident, putting their full face in and blowing the bubbles, you can take that one. Um, and I can jump in. So as soon as they are independent enough to jump into the water without holding your hand, two hands, without holding your fingers, without jumping to you or onto you, um, you can take that one. Okay.